Since Roman times, woodworking planes have been part of the carpenter's toolkit. And despite the invention of power tools for wood surfacing, many still prefer the hands-on approach of this simple tool. Using it is a skill that can take a piece of timber from rough to refined. If wood needs shaping, it's time to reach for the bench plane. On the push stroke, it shaves down bumps and high spots on wood to make the surface level and true. Production begins with bench plane patterns. They place several in a box and pour fine sand mixed with a bonding chemical over them. The bonding chemical solidifies the sand. They poke holes to vent gases later on. And with the patterns removed, it's clear that the bonding chemical has worked its magic. The patterns have left a definite impression in the hardened sand. They apply glue to one half of the mold so it adheres to the half with the impressions in it. Then they glue two square-shaped spouts around holes in the sand mold. Next, they fire up the foundry furnace and melt iron into a white-hot liquid. Workers then carefully pour the molten metal down the square spouts and into the sand molds. Gases are released through the holes poked in the sand earlier, while weights keep the lids from lifting from the pressure. After a two-hour cool-down, they break the molds and pick out the cast-iron parts. The planes have a knobby protuberance formed as metal flowed into the mold. They slice that off. And after strengthening the cast iron's physical properties, they mill the bottom of the bench plane to make it reasonably flat. This also exposes a slit formed during molding. They now lock the bench plane in position to allow the spiked teeth of a cutting wheel to carve into the molded slit. It enlarges the slit to form the mouth of the bench plane, the opening through which the plane's blade will protrude. Some precision work is needed, so a tapered and serrated tool is forced through the mouth. This opens it up a little more to give it the exact dimensions required. Coolant now flows to prevent overheating, as a grinding wheel machines the base of each bench plane until it's completely flat. They now try to slip a very thin steel strip between a level bar and the base of the bench plane. Failure confirms it's perfectly flat. Next, a cutting tool evens a sloped pad molded onto the front of the bench plane. This pad, called the frog, will hold the sliding wedge that sets the angle of the plane blade. Production now focuses on the blade. They heat a steel rod in a furnace until it's white hot and malleable. Then they place it under a mechanized hammer, which pounds it until it's flat. They turn the flattened steel sideways and the pulsating hammer squares the edges. Then another tool stamps the company insignia onto one end of the blade. The steel rod has been flattened, squared and stamped. It's then cut to the desired shape and dimensions and given a beveled cutting edge. The next part is called a lever cap and it will be used to clamp the blade to the bench plane frog. They sand it smooth to improve its look and function. Then they buff each part of the bench plane against a cloth wheel to a mirror-like finish. It's now time to fit the bench plane frog into the pad machined especially for it. They secure it with screws. The cutting blade, by now reinforced by a part called the cap iron, fits flush to the frog. They top off the assembly with the lever cap and clamp it all together with a spring system. They fit a knob made of tropical wood on a threaded rod on the front of the bench plane. The knob and the back handle will allow the user to firmly grip the bench plane and push it forward. And with the blade now protruding from the base on an angle, it's ready to level any piece of wood 
leaving only shavings in its wake.